for probably 30 minutes, Sophie couldn't find her cat, which <laughs> delayed our podcast. And then another 45 minutes it took for us to figure out how to work our microphones. So welcome to season two, everyone. This is the pro- <laughs> pod. <laughs> this is the processing podcast with myself, Mary Rominger. And, and Sophia Booth. Booth. Oh my gosh, that's the first intro <laughs> with Sophia Booth. Honestly, the fact that you messed up the intro is a perfect <laughs> illustration of how tragic the last half. Honestly, no, it hasn't even been. It's been an hour because yeah. I lost Darcy for half an hour, <laughs> and then it took us a half an hour to figure this shit out. You losing Darcy, I imagine, happens all the time and that's why I have no desire to get a pet (laughs) I mean I do but she's so reliable that she always comes back like we've only had one instance where I genuinely thought that she was gone forever and I was really bargaining with God (laughs) to (laughs) bring her back and hey here she is so that's nice cool. okay so you're married now the last time we recorded this podcast sophie was before your bachelorette party so a lot has happened because not only are you married i am a texas resident now yeah i no longer live in minnesota and you have Did a I different job live in texas no <laughs> <laughs> but here we are <laughs> Honestly, it suits you, I feel like. Really? Yeah, I feel like it does. Like, at least from the little bit that I know about Texas, which is next to no information (laughs) at all. I don't know. I feel like the influencers I come across and the people I meet from Texas, like, is in your category of person, I would say. Well, I'll recap how I even got here. But first, you're married. What has your first almost year of marriage been like? Um, Just catch us up to speed. Catch me up to speed. I mean, how do you spend Valentine's Day when you're married? (laughs) Well, that's actually really interesting because Valentine's Day used to be our... (laughs) Darcy just saw something outside. Um, Valentine's Day used to be our anniversary. So now we have a completely different anniversary. Valentine's Day is not only like toned down because we're married, (laughs) but it's toned down because that's no longer our anniversary. Um, Okay. Well, there she goes. (laughs) Um, So we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna play it chill and we're gonna save all of the big romantic plans for the one year anniversary. Um, But just like in summation, I guess, the honeymoon and the wedding, those two weeks were probably the best weeks of my life. I don't know how I'm ever going to top it ever. Um, So it's actually in that way, it's a little bit depressing. Darren's always like, oh, I'm, I love looking back on these memories. Like they make me so happy that they happened. And I'm just like, yeah, but I'm really sad that it's over though. And so he has a more positive outlook than me. But um, I mean, overall, everything's been going good. We everybody says, oh, the first year of marriage is the hardest. Um, I don't think that's true. I think the first year of living together is the hardest. Um, I think getting used to somebody else's schedule, getting used to like, what they do and their little quirks and figuring out like, who does what in the house and how you divide up all of the work and how you manage your own alone time. I think all of that is really hard. Yeah. Um, But it's honestly been really easy. Like we combined our bank accounts. I changed my name. Oh my gosh. Changing the name. I'm still changing my name. Still. A year later. Still going through it. Yeah. So that takes a long time. But anyways, I mean, I thought, I think it's been going really good. I think it's been fun and easy and we've been just on our little newlywed cloud well that's amazing um yeah I cannot believe your wedding has been almost a year 
from today. That's crazy. I know. The bachelorette right? party. Because is your like, wedding was in April. Yeah, but this is like February. a year from the bachelorette party. Yeah. Yeah, I um I have been keeping tabs with you to just like on social media, just kind of see just to see if there's anything that was different or that's been different about your life or anything um since you've been married. But I feel like if anything, you're just a little bit more low key and your focus is on the next steps to building your life together. And I think that's awesome. I also went through a incredible transition in my relationship. My boyfriend of three plus years moved with me to San Antonio, Texas after living his entire life, born and raised in Minnesota. And the transition I thought might have its challenges. It might be potentially lonely moving to a new city where you don't know anyone. I think that's a fear for everyone um, when they move somewhere brand new. But so far, it's been good. When you're in a relationship, do you agree, Sophie? Your time together can fill up Monday through Sunday, 24 hours a day. Like there's so much that's involved in just being in a relationship. Like you can talk 24 seven. There's always something going on I feel like yeah for sure um and especially when you're living together yeah. I mean I think <laughs> I think when you're living together the challenge I mean you still want to make time to like actually go on dates rather than just hanging around the house and like being lazy together because I think mm-hmm. that can get old but I think the bigger challenge is finding time for yourself like when you're living together yeah as you wake up with the person you say the if I have to ask what are we having for dinner one more time? I'm going to lose it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to absolutely lose my mind. That's funny. And it's so opposite. And maybe that's, that's why I feel like I could so easily be entertained by just the person I'm in a relationship with. It's probably because of our opposite work schedules. And I remember talking about it last season on our podcast. Like I work generally two to 11. He works Mm -hmm. eight to four so the time that we spend together is pretty rare so even though we live together and we're isolated in one apartment in a state away from all friends and family like we still don't see each other that much it's crazy that's so crazy I know because like you would think that I mean but it just makes sense because your your schedules are so opposite but yeah the days you have off are still not his off days, right? Correct. And there are some times that I am off on a random Saturday or I have the weekend off for some whatever reason. And those days are incredible. Like just to wake up together. I don't have to have the stress of having to go to work later on in the day. Yeah. Um, those have been really special days, but it's wild how rare they are. And in fact, sometimes when I am home frequently, like let's say one week I work an earlier schedule because I'm not anchoring, um, it is a transition. Both of us being off at the same time, like are we going to go try and maximize our time together and go have fun? Are we going to um, work out together? Like how are we going to spend this time (laughs) that we're not used to having together? So it's, it's really it's really, really different. I wonder if anyone, like, I'm so curious if you have a similar situation, like message me on social media or something and (laughs) tell me what that's like for you guys, because um, it is really, I don't even know when that would change. Like my career is most definitely always going to be in the evenings. So Mm -hmm. having a schedule where we have the night together consistently and weekends is like, it's it's something I can't even imagine. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. Well, because we're opposites then because Darren and I have the same exact schedule. We wake up at the same time every day. We go to work. We both come home at the same time. We eat the same meals. We go to the gym at the same time. We watch the same movies, watch the same shows. We read the same books at night before we go to bed. Like our lives are absolutely intertwined. And yours is the exact opposite where Mm -hmm. you're like, what do we even do with this time together? Yeah. So, but I'm curious, like, like, if you had your pick, 
which one would you choose? <laughs> which life would you choose? Honestly, it just works out for both of our personalities to not be to- together that much. Yeah. And it almost sounds weird to say because it's like, okay, well, one day, are you guys going to be able to always be around each other and kind of operate in that way? But we, I'm so content being focused on my career for most of the week. And he's so content sticking to his schedule and his routine that yeah. it almost works out really well for us naturally. Um, so I don't know. It, it, I don't know what I would prefer. Um, I I could see the value in both, but I think what we have now works out. I will be completely honest, though. It does evoke a lot of anxiety because it feels like every time we do have an evening off together or we do have a full day together, we have to maximize it. Yeah. I It's more so from me like I I want to make the most of every moment and to feel like we really escaped from our our regular lives together and and um get valuable like quality time but that's not achievable all the time it's just not realistic it's not financially smart it's not a good way to just be productive during the week so Mm -hmm. that's something I'm I'm still trying to figure out to be honest yeah that's the one like major negative yeah, that makes sense. But I mean, like you said, it works for your guys's personalities, though. Like me, mm-hmm. honestly, I'm just too needy. I'm like too, I don't want to say codependent because I'm an independent woman and I could have my own schedule and do my own thing. But I feel like I would just for my own personality, I would just be like too lonely almost. But that's the thing is like, I feel like you're so independent and you were someone who never for a while, like even imagined having a long-term relationship. Like that wasn't in your long-term plan when you were younger Mm -hmm. that like you kind of like Evan is like this amazing bonus to your life Yeah, where it's like, you know, it was never in the plan per se, but it was just like the happiest accident. And it, yeah. And that it makes sense that it works out in in the way of his personality because from day one it was never like okay we're gonna try and have a routine together throughout the week and we're gonna try to be together all the time but I mean we do text a lot like we text all throughout the day um there are there are ways that we cope and and make sure we're involved with each other constantly like I when I see him on my off day when he comes home from work it's not like oh my gosh we need to catch up it's because yeah. I call him on my lunch breaks. And um, the last thing I'll say about it, though, is there are times like the Super Bowl, for example, where he doesn't have his like friend's house to go to like he did in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. But he, he was surprisingly really excited about the idea of just being home and getting to focus on the Super Bowl and not have to. It's not that he doesn't enjoy socializing, but sometimes, especially when it comes to sports, to be able to fully focus is like awesome, especially for the Super Bowl. Um, Yeah. So anyways, so he's he's transitioned well. It sounds like you've transitioned well to married life. And um, real quick, I feel like we should just talk about the identity of season two of the processing podcast, because. Before when we started it, we had the intention of it being very career focused and how can we have productive conversation, kind of digest these topics going on in the world, um, going on in our lives, which it was great. And I, I love that for us. <laughs> yeah. But now season two, I think <laughs> um, we're both at a point and we have an interesting enough uh like lifestyle going on for both of us that maybe we kind of break down that that um you know talking to the audience trying to share a message and we just talk to each other we share what's going on in our lives and just you know the the best way i can describe it is we would record the podcast like all bi-weekly every two weeks last year. And then right after we record the podcast, we would talk for an hour about things <laughs> we wanted to talk about that were 
more so centered on each other or just catching up with each other. And I think um, we both agree that putting that conversation out there and being a little bit more vulnerable in that way is the direction we want the podcast to go. Yeah, you guys should have heard it. Mary was throwing so much shade (laughs) at our first season. She was like, she literally (laughs) said she was like, love that we did like 45 minutes or an hour, but like, we're not that interesting. (laughs) Yeah, love that we attempted it. And it works for some people. It doesn't exactly work for us. Um, And it wasn't 45 minutes to an hour. It was consistently an hour and a half to two hours. (laughs) So I'm, I'll just clarify. It was great. What were we talking it, about? What were we, we talking about? <laughs> I know. And we, um, I think it helped develop our skills as podcasters in 2023. But now it's 2024. We're entering new eras of our life. And we're going to get raw and real on mm-hmm. this podcast. Okay. Yeah, and starting no with fluff. Sing- Starting with sitting on a couch in our PJs, <laughs> that should set the tone for y'all. Yes. Okay. So um, one question I want to ask that I don't think you ever answered when I asked you via text, how much money did you win for the Super Bowl? I don't even know what the bet was. Well, All Sophie said was, I made a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, in the spirit of season two, I wanted to save all of our actual conversations for right now okay so i was I like i'm not that. gonna tell her i'm not <laughs> gonna tell her but okay ever since i decided to be a lions fan because i married into it um i've gotten very into football just like following it learning about the teams and everything so darren was like hey why don't i because it's um what's it called again it's called i forget what the app is called it's called. Are you, are you talking about Prize Picks? Yeah, <laughs> Sophie, I have made so much money on Prize Picks. Yeah, Dude, you're on Prize Picks. This is yes. the best. You don't understand. Evan and I are Prize Pick <laughs> fiends. I have profited over close to a thousand dollars. I okay. Evan I, has that's profited awesome. close to four thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like okay. we own prize picks. That's a total exaggeration, but I'm so excited about this. Okay. Tell me more. Okay. Well, I need to be careful because I could see myself having a gambling problem. <laughs> you do continue. have to be careful. So I need to be careful, but I love prize picks because they give you all of the stats and you can like really, really assess your bets. No free ads. And so- I had four different bets yesterday um, and I hit three for four. So that was pretty sick. That's a double. Yeah. How much do you bet? Are you you doing the minimum? Yeah. Well, no. So, okay. There was like, I did a couple different ones. Like some, I only bet like 25. Others, I bet like 100. So I think I was. Oh my God. I was. Okay. So just for reference, if you don't know what price picks is, Mm -hmm. I bet. $5 all the time. And on a special occasion, I'll bet 10 to 20. So Mm -hmm. Sophie's saying that she bet 25 to 100. Okay, continue. (laughs) Well, so okay, they were having like a promotion where if you sign up, they'll give you like a free $100 to gamble with. So I just matched it. And so I had technically $200 and nice yeah three out of four of my bets hit and i won a total of like 430 bucks let's go so that's like a total profit of what like 330 bucks yeah okay i just want to tell you my entries and see if you think that they're good bets personally i thought they were very strategic but you can you can tell me i mean i'll tell you this i had one two three four five five Super Bowl bets. I did have other NBA bets Mm -hmm. and they were the board. Okay. This is getting way too into the weeds. The, like the board was brutal for the Super Bowl on price picks. They, they didn't, they didn't give too much. Like the the options were limited and a lot of the over-unders were, were, um, were tough. Okay. 
So what did they you, were, what were your picks? So I had a really hard time like going, like figuring out. Did you use the do. free Mahomes square or was it already yeah. gone? But Okay. Nice. I did. So I used the free Mahomes square. And then along with that one, I, um, I picked uh Christian McCaffrey for a touchdown. So okay. that hit. Um, then I did Jake Moody for one field goal, which no problem. That was so easy. Um, and then Christian McCaffrey for 23.5 points for a fantasy score. Well, you can't do that in the same slip. So is that another slip? But then no. And then if you add, if you add the one player from another team, you can do it. No chance. You cannot have in one slip, the same player in any situation no, it wasn't it was no 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 oh this is a different one that was okay. the first one. Oh, okay now okay, that's a, yeah yeah the second one is moody for a field goal christian mccaffrey for 23.5 fantasy points and travis kelsey for 50 yards so that one after travis kelsey had one yard in the first half i was losing my you mind were sweating i kept asking darren i said do you think like he pooped his pants and like he has he's having a hard time like running up and down <laughs> the field because it was a weird Super Bowl. Well, congratulations on your winnings. I'm really happy that you're you're into it now. My advice is at least okay. So Evan and I are are, are at different levels. He keeps previously to losing a little bit. He he was keeping a minimum of one thousand in his account, and then and then taking out from there. I, because I didn't put in a hundred initially to get it matched. I only put in 25. Um, and then I hit on my first on. So on Friday, are you familiar with flex Fridays? Oh no, you're frozen. Oh my gosh, you're back. Sorry. Yeah, you froze. Sorry. Okay. Are you familiar with flex Fridays? No. Okay. Every Friday you, you get a protected $20 bet. So you get the money back no matter what. So on my first day where I bought in and got my money match, I hit a $20 six out of six flex Friday. Oh. So I had 500. So it, but Evan has like, he's grown his account a lot more and had a lot more success bet with more money. So yeah. um, I am trying to keep a minimum of just 100 all the time. Now I have a different goal and um, I have a, New Year's resolution goal of trying to build my account to five thousand dollars. That's not going to happen. But so now that my goal is that, I'm like not taking out at all. Ever since I hit a two hundred two hundred and ten, I am like just trying to build it up, and I'll probably lose it all, and that's how it'll be. But I'm really really excited. I'm gonna send you. There's people I follow that hit at a really high rate, six out of six, and I'll like if I feel really good about one, I'll send them to you so you could just. I recommend five dollar bets because it's okay. it's twenty it, you twenty five times. Um, it, it just betting, especially if you. I know it feels like four hundred is a lot, but trust me, the dry spells on Prize Picks are insane. Like it's okay. it's it's you had great success, and so did I. My very first night, it you need, that's how they hook you. <laughs> yes, you need to bet lower units. Like I, I really, okay. that's my, I, I think that that would benefit you a lot. And Hey, if it, if it works and send me your slips too, like if you're okay. having way more success than I've ever had, like, please send me yours. I'll send you <laughs> mine. Okay. So moving on from that, congratulations. Um, Thank you. I have a sticky note of, of notes I wrote down from the commercials from the Super Bowl and oh, okay. the halftime performance. Oh, right. Okay. And also the uh, one quick thing, speaking of betting, um, my dad was in Vegas for the Super Bowl. If you bet that the game would go to overtime, the odds were plus 3000. So just imagine that like, cause that was only the second Super Bowl to go into OT. Yeah. So the yeah. odds were horrific or like yeah. really not in your favor and it happened. So just, you could feel bad about that with me that man imagine <laughs> yeah could you imagine we'd be so did you watch the rich. halftime performance what was that did you watch the halftime performance yeah i did okay so i i haven't told you how i feel about it yet 
And I'm going to be completely honest. Okay. Okay. So serious, Mary. I have trouble imagining a world where that wasn't the best Super Bowl halftime performance of all time. I agree. I 100% agree. I was thinking about, do you remember like when we were in high school and like the black eyed peas did the Super Bowl? I remember watching that and literally thinking, this is absolute garbage. Yes. And then I watched a lot of mediocre halftime performances. And I will say recency, like talking recently, uh, not Beyonce, Rihanna. She did good, but (laughs) that like if you're comparing last year's and this year's usher blew it out of the park (laughs) he commanded the entire field he like he he sampled each song with the perfect amount of time yes and like each setting showed each era i thought well and the genres too like my um well for whatever reason my mom and my mother-in-law are in love with Usher. Absolutely Same. in love. <laughs> I don't Same. know why that's a thing for that demographic. But... No, I consider myself in that demographic because <laughs> I know I've jokingly said on the podcast before, I think Tyler, the creator, is like my number one. I'm not kidding. Usher is mine. <laughs> like, I have never, I haven't said that because I always forget when I think about it, but Usher and Sam Hunt are like just physically just <laughs> well okay I feel you though but okay first of all like are you like a 60 year old woman like I don't I understand guess so. <laughs> <laughs> no but okay I feel you because my I, when people ask like what kind of music do you listen to I almost at least for like a year straight I exclusively listen to early 2000s R&B. So like Usher, Neo, Chris Brown, like those were my absolute staples. Yes. So I get it. But I also get it when people ask, like, I would never think to say Usher. But now that he's made this resurgence from the Super Bowl, maybe I will. No, the resurgence even happened before because he's had that residency in Vegas. Oh, and yeah. have you seen clips from it? Like he, his vocals are still so insane and he puts on mm. long shows. And I think my favorite, like the element that kind of put it over the edge for me was the dancing. Yeah. I mean, the roller skates. Are you kidding? <laughs> the roller skates were really cool. And for the roller skates. skates with Will oh. I Am, that was, that was a really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. In my notes, I said each number for the set list so like each dance was that was that your surprise for me no i'll tell you in a second um i said <laughs> oh each number for the set list with the era and i said commanded all 110 yards oh yeah agreed so, um okay i oh and then also the commercials i thought were phenomenal just because comedy was at the forefront of every commercial Mm-hmm. thoughts um i mean there was no commercial that like absolutely blew me away i'll be honest yeah. except okay wait 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 the there boxing? was one the dunking the what? no have you already said it or am i guessing i mean if it doesn't come to you right away then we probably have different opinions. the arnold uh state no. farm no uh, do you think that was funny are you talking about the Beyonce Verizon commercial? No. Okay. No. Mm. Okay, give me a hint. Um, I mean, was super it candy? Bad. What? No, super bad. Oh God, I'm not gonna know what. <laughs> the Sarah Bay commercial with Michael oh. Sarah. Yeah, but that one ha- was they've already done. That okay. That wasn't new. That was still the funniest one where he literally puts the hand cream on the rock and the rock is like smooth after it. What was the last line he said? He was like he had a funny one-liner to end it that was inappropriate. I don't know. 
but I was, was laughing like, too hard. I probably didn't even hear it. I hope. I hope like something about his cream. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the one liner was, but it was like funny and inappropriate. But that was the only one where I was actually laughing. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, the, it was more like I felt like the comedy sketch type like that that was the general vibe to me it felt like all the commercials were trying to it felt like snl like yeah Mm -hmm. um okay so um sorry i (laughs) we also vowed to make our podcast shorter so i'm trying to get in a lot of information i know it's already been like 30 minutes and i i do have a a surprise because we did talk about um in every podcast you having a cocktail segment oh yeah so i have a video prepared for you oh but i realized that i filmed it in three parts because you made your own cocktail all together and i don't know why i had that expectation for myself to like put together like a TikTok for you. I because don't know. Because you're not busy enough, Mary. <laughs> yeah, the Super Bowl was actually a really busy night because we have a 30 minute sports show where it's yeah. all about the Super Bowl. So it was cool because we had to pay attention and and we it's not like most times where you have to talk about a game that you're too busy to actually pay attention to. But um, I, I don't think I can execute this surprise in the way that I want to. So <laughs> I'll just explain it because that's always way more funny when you that's explain always, a yeah. joke. <laughs> and that's always way more effective to being yeah. explained a video rather than being shown a video. That's always way better. I love yeah, that. So I'm happy actually that it worked out this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that my plan actually didn't go according to plan at all. Really happy about that. I actually have two surprises. Okay, so this okay. one, this one, I I was going to surprise you with a weekly segment where I make a cocktail and you have to judge the cocktail by its appearance and what I put in it. Even though you can't try it, you had to. It was more of an imagination. Okay. Sport. Okay. Oh. Okay. And what's what funny? You have okay. So I. I had freshly squeezed um, orange juice. I added a splash of kombucha, freshly squeezed lime um, for the juice base. And then for the alcohol, I had a splash of vodka, blackberry liqueur, and indigo gin. And then for the garnish, I had um, a sugar rim. And as you can imagine with those combinations of colors orange blue purple the orange seems weird the orange seems weird in that yeah okay so see this is why the i wish you this could have been also the kombucha sounds weird in that how would how did that taste it was a strawberry glow kombucha so i i think the orange juice is right the three different alcohols i thought were the problem but now hearing you say it was the orange juice, I I, I think that's what it was. Okay, it say the ing- weird. Like, rattle them off again. All the ingredients. I'll I'll um here I'll I'll show you quick and then I'll I'll say them. Let me see. Oh, it looks so cute, though. Honestly, a plus for presentation. Okay, I thought the color might throw you off a little bit. No, so it's orange no, that's juice, fine. freshly squeezed orange juice. Freshly squeezed lime, um, a splash of strawberry glow kombucha, indigo gin, blackberry liqueur, vodka. Yeah, you're right. I would take out either the gin or the vodka. I might take out gin with that, though, might work. I might have taken out the vodka. I might have taken out the vodka and the orange juice. So lime and... (laughs) Yeah, lime, black bo- blackberry liqueur, gin, and kombucha. I've never made a drink with kombucha before, so that's super interesting. So um, I – go ahead. Okay, but I want to give it a score. Okay. Right? 
Okay. Um, it's going to be way better next time because I'll send the video ahead and I won't film it in three parts. <laughs> <laughs> you won't like explain to me the video. <laughs> Instead of just showing and it was me. funny because uh, my reaction at the end when I tried it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I love imagining it instead of actually seeing it. That's imagination is is way more fun. Okay. Um, so I would give it like a six. We can only go up from here, folks. So yeah, I guess that's like a D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. So, um, oh, shoot. I forgot what also, I was going to say. Go ahead. Hey Darcy. <laughs> Hello, Darcy. Okay. Well, did you have fun escaping earlier and wasting my time? I'm just kidding. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say at the beginning of the year, I did dry January and, um, I every twice a day, I had a quote unquote mocktail, which was just a way for me to, to have, uh, my daily dose of apple cider vinegar. So mm. I need apple cider vinegar, one and a half tablespoons, um, kombucha, those Olipop poppy uh, sodas, uh, like a carbonated water and a juice, but like a hundred percent juice, cranberry juice, cherry mm -hmm. juice. And I tell you, they're phenomenal. I'm trying to get myself to be excited about mocktails. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I you still, have to try this. Like sometimes I, I feel like I I'm a, I'm like a frat star. I don't know why I can't wrap my head around enjoying them. Although I've seen the ones that Katy Perry. Have you seen hers? The adaptogens. No. That she. Oh yeah, I don't have interest in those type of mocktails because. If they're not going to like improve my gut health or help me mm -hmm. out in any way, then it's just like I'm just drinking sugar for no reason. Yeah. It's supposed to be like giving you the relaxation and like the, I guess like it's more of like mental, a mental stimulation rather than like. That sounds like you free. might have a problem if that's how you mentally <laughs> stimulate yourself. Okay, Sophie, we have less than a minute. I so know. in that time, I have something to tell you, and we're going to wrap up the podcast. Are you ready? Oh my God. I'm okay, going to yeah, bleep yeah, go, go. this out entirely. I just want your reaction, so don't say anything about it. I okay. just want your reaction forever. Okay, ready? And then we're going to sign off. I'm bleeping this out, so it's just your reaction. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say anything? No, but you could just react. <laughs> <laughs> okay but i'm also not entirely shocked but we need to talk about this more this is way more than less than a minute allows for why would you do this all right and that's I'm the sorry. processing podcast episode one of season two i